a great morning of worship and hear a great word from our pastor. Would you go ahead and stand and sing along with us? goodness of God. God is so good. All right, here we go.
Rolling Stones sing this chorus out all of our life. for singing along. Hey, if you guys would go ahead and take a seat, uh, we have a little treat for you guys. The message today uh, is actually about these shirts that are out in the lobby. Uh, we're not perfect. We don't expect you to be. Pastor Jonathan's about to come up here in just a moment. Uh, and the whole idea is it's, it's okay to not be okay, but it's not okay to stay that way. And so um, we thought it'd be very fitting to play a song you guys might know, sing along, called Break Broken. share of broken halos, golden wings that used to fly, they've all gone wherever they go, broken halos that used to shine,
Don't go looking for the reasons. Don't go asking Jesus why. Cause we're not meant to know all the answers. They belong to the Bible. excited about all that God did in the last 20 years, but I'm super excited about the next 20 years. It's like we're just getting started, and I truly believe the best is yet to come. Like the vision that God has put on my heart is huge, and if it's going to happen, it's going to take a huge step of faith, and just as we saw God move when the, the Field of Dreams offering or the Imagine the Possibilities offering or the All In, like he's gonna have to do it again. And I'm excited about leading our church to take a huge step of faith and trust God to do what only he can do. To build a church that is gonna last for 150 years. Like we wanna build a church, not just for us, not just for our kids, but for our grandkids and the generations to come. All right. Uh, last Sunday uh, was such a special Sunday uh, for Jennifer and I and for our church as we celebrated uh, 20 years. It's hard to believe that it's been uh, 20 years. I just want to thank everyone who put so much work into making last week so special. Uh, Mark Hanley, our children's pastors, our incredible staff, all of our amazing volunteers. Thank you guys so much for making last week uh, just a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, Sunday. We had all of our worship leaders up here. Uh, we had the choir uh, the music was phenomenal. The fall festival was incredible. Uh, the 20-year recap video is probably the best video uh, we've ever had. It was inspiring. It was emotional. Uh, it was humbling. Uh, the Brett Farr video uh, was super great. Uh, loved hearing from Brett Farr. Several people told me that I look way younger uh, than Brett Farr. So, uh, you know, we're the same age. Um, I'm not going to say anything about that. Actually, there's some leftover uh, soft-serve ice cream on my table right here. The soft-serve ice cream was on point. Uh, it, was just, uh, it was just an incredible Sunday, and it was great. Uh, everyone who was able to come from our Monroe campus or our Coney campus, and several people told me it was so good having all of our church together. And it was a great reminder to us that, that we're, we're one church. We are, we are one church. Being able to, able to worship together, seeing people that we hadn't seen uh, in, in a long time. It was a super special day. And I shared last week the vision that God has laid in my heart to build a church that's going to last 150 years. I truly believe the best is yet to come uh, for Grace Stone Church. We're excited about the last 20 years, but we we're more excited about the next 20 years. And I believe God's going to use us to reach the next generation. And we're going to see a revival in America in our lifetime. And so I am super, super, super uh, excited about this. Everybody's been asking about the land. Where is the land? And I want to let you guys know we are aggressively looking for land. And I want to ask you to pray. Pray that God would lead us to where he wants us to be. Okay, in his, the perfect place and in his perfect place timing. So we kicked off the series last week, Built to Last. We still have the Built to Last uh, t-shirts for sale in the lobby at all of our campuses. 
Uh, and actually, we're rolling out new T-shirts, new Greystone merch every week, okay? So we're going to have hats and hoodies and long sleeve tees. And today, uh, this is the shirt. We're not perfect. We don't expect you to be. And so you can pick these up uh, in the lobby. And so we're building the message around these statements, or around the, these sayings that we've picked up over the years. And so what I want to talk about today is we're not perfect we don't expect you to be. And how does that apply to us? How does that, how does that apply to our church? How does that apply uh, to our community? So I'm gonna read the passage. Of course, we always dive in, into God's word uh, every week. And so we're gonna read 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 13 and following, and then we're gonna talk about it. It says, so prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. So you must live as God's obedient children. Do not slip back into the old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then. But now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scriptures say, be holy because I am holy. And remember that the heavenly Father to whom you pray has no favorites. He will judge or reward you according to what you do. So you must live in reverent fear of him during your time here as temporary residents. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. And now in these last days, it has been revealed for your sake. Through Christ, you have come to trust in God and you have placed your faith and hope in God because he raised Christ from the dead and gave him great glory. So point number one is we're not perfect. Come as you are. You guys have probably heard me say this hundreds and hundreds of times. It doesn't matter who you are, where you've been, or what you've done. You're welcome at Greystone Church. Amen. We have a come as you are mentality. Now, now, physical appearance, come as you are, it's the idea that you can wear whatever you want to wear uh, to church. Like whatever, whatever, you, whatever you wear during the week, you can, you can wear at church on Sundays. Like, like come as you are. You don't have to go buy church clothes. You don't have to go buy fancy clothes. You be you, right? You be yourself. Now, now, 20 years ago, people used to get dressed up for church. The culture has changed in 20 years, okay? Everything, everything's pretty casual these days. But back in the early days of Greystone Church, we were, we were meeting in a warehouse. And one of, the, one of the guys shared the other night at a discipleship group, he said, the first time I came to the warehouse 15 years ago, he said, I, I couldn't believe it. People were in blue jeans and T-shirts and hats, and there was like a rock band. And, and he came from a Catholic background, and he was kind of freaking out. Like, I don't, I don't know if I want to go back to this place. Like, this, is, this seems pretty weird to me. Uh, Jamie Barwick, our executive pastor, was saying the first time he came to Greystone back, back in the warehouse, they said people were, were in cargo shorts and flip-flops. And the day that he came, 85 people were baptized. And we used, to, we used to do all, you know, baptisms, you know, one Sunday of the year. We couldn't afford a baptistry, so we would borrow one from another church. And so we would just do them all in one day. And, and Jamie said, I don't know what's going on at Greystone Church, but, but God is moving. You come as you are. You, you wear what you want to wear, right? But deeper than that, the spiritual meaning of that is... You come as you are. Like you don't have to get your life together in order to come to church. And I hear people say this all the time. Well, I'm trying to get my people will text me, and, and I'm not going to say the words that they use. I'm trying to get my junk together. I'm trying to get my stuff together, and then I'll come to church. You don't have to get your stuff together to come to church. You come as you are. You, you bring your baggage, you bring your junk, you bring your sin, you bring your shame, you bring your guilt. As we say in Celebrate Recovery, you bring your hurts and your habits and your hangups. Like you come as you are. You don't have to be perfect to come to church, right? You don't have to have a perfect marriage. You don't have to have perfect kids. You don't have to have perfect theology. 
You don't have to have to know the Bible backwards and, and frontwards. You don't even have to have to know the Bible at all to come to church. Church is not a museum to display the righteousness of the saints. Church is a hospital for the sick and the broken. Jesus said in Luke 5, 31, 32, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus didn't come for the healthy. Jesus came for the sick and the broken. Greystone Church is a church for the sick and the broken. Greystone Church is a church for imperfect people. You don't have to have your stuff together in order to come to church. We bring our baggage, we bring our baggage to Jesus. We surrender it to him. We can't clean ourselves up. He's the one who does the cleaning. We can't heal ourselves. Jesus is the one who heals us. We don't come to church because we're perfect people. We come to church because we're imperfect people. We are all sinners in need of a Savior. A couple of weeks ago at our, our men's discipleship group, we had a guy show up to our discipleship group. This is the first time it's ever happened to me, any small group, any discipleship group. This guy shows up to our discipleship group high. He, he, he was high. And I looked at him, I said, I said, you're high. He said, no, I'm not. I said, you're, all, you're, you're on something. You're, you're on drugs. No, I'm not. So he went on to explain he had just had shoulder, shoulder surgery. And he, uh, he was coming off of anesthesiology and he was coming off of a nerve blocker. And I said, you're not on drugs? He said, no. I said, well, you're high. He said, no, I'm not. I said, you don't even have shoes on. <laughs> you, you, you've got on your hospital socks. <laughs> but I love the fact that he had surgery a few hours earlier, but he still wanted to come to church. He still wanted to be a part of small group. He said, I, I could be in pain sitting at home. And he was, he was talking a lot and he was talking real fast, but it was, it was great. So if we're not perfect, how, how, do, how do we get to heaven? I think, I think that's, the, that's the million dollar question. So I, I grew up more of a, a works-based salvation. So, so the idea, and a lot, a lot of us grew up this way, uh, we had this mentality of uh, if my goods outweigh my bads, then, then, then that's gonna tip the scales and God's gonna let me into heaven. That, that's, the, that's the mentality we have. And so, so if, I, if, I, if I tell a lie, well, I better read my Bible, right? So if I steal something, well, I better go to church. Well, if, if I drink too much, well, then, then I, bet, I better serve, right? If I, if I overeat, then, then, then I better get in a small group. <laughs> so, we, so we have this mentality of I've got to do enough good to outweigh the bad in my life so that I could go to heaven. Listen to what it says in Isaiah 64, 6. All of us have become like one who is unclean. And all of our righteous acts are like filthy rags. Even the good deeds that we do are like filthy rags to God. There's not enough good we can do to tip the scales. James 2.10 says, For whoever keeps the whole law, yet stumbles at one point, is guilty of breaking all of it. I want you to wrap your brain around that. If, if you've sinned just one time, you've had one lustful fault, you've talked bad about someone one time, like if you've, if you've broken God's law just one time, you're guilty of breaking all of it. We're all guilty. As the Chris Stapleson song says, we all have broken halos. Like we're all guilty. We've all made mistakes. We've all fallen short of, of God's standard. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've all made mistakes. We've all done things that we wish we hadn't done. We've all said things that we wish we, we hadn't said. We are all guilty. Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death. The penalty for our sin, the penalty for our mistakes is death. Spiritual death, separation from God. The Bible talks about a place called hell. 
So what's the answer? How do we get to heaven? We're not perfect, but Jesus is. Jesus is perfect. 1 Peter 1.19, back to our main passage. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless lamb of God. Jesus was without sin. He was the perfect sacrifice. He died in our place. It says in 1 Peter 2, 22 to 24, he committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. Listen to this. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that you might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. And then over in the next chapter, 1 Peter 3, 18 says, for Christ died for sins once and for all, the righteous for the unrighteous to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the spirit. Jesus lived a perfect life. He died on the cross for our sins. The penalty for sin is death. Jesus paid the penalty for us. As John the Baptist says, behold the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. We don't get to heaven by our good works. We get to heaven by Jesus' good work on the cross. And so it's the cross of Christ that has replaced the scale, right? We no longer, it's, it's no longer can I do enough good to get to heaven? It's the cross of Christ has replaced the scale. We can't pile up enough good deeds to tip the scale. We get to heaven through putting our faith and putting our trust in Jesus Christ. Right. We're continuing on in the main passage, 1 Peter 1, 18 through 20. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. But now in the last days, he has been revealed for your sake. God paid the ransom for us. And he didn't pay it with gold or silver. He paid it with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Those of you who are parents, those of us who are parents, if you had a child that was kidnapped, if you had a child that was taken hostage and there was a ransom, you had to pay a ransom, how much would you be willing to pay to get your son back? How much would you be willing to pay to get your daughter back? Now, 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 if someone took, kidnapped one of my kids and they said the ransom is a million dollars and you have 24 hours to get it. Now, I don't, I don't have a million dollars, but I promise you in 24 hours, I would find a million dollars. I would make it happen. As a dad, I would do whatever it took to get her back. Now, let me ask you this. If your child is a hostage, would you do a prisoner exchange? Would you trade your life for her life? Of course, if you're mom or dad, you would. Like you would, you would exchange your life for her life. This is what God did for us. His son, Jesus Christ, the precious blood of Christ. He exchanged his son's life for our life, he paid the ransom for us. Amen. He died in our place. We don't get to heaven through obeying the law. We get to heaven through the precious blood of Jesus. For Christ died for sins once and for all. So we're not perfect. So we come to Jesus. We're not perfect. So we come to Jesus. With all of our sin, all of our past, all of our shame, all of our junk, all of our hurts and our habits and our hangups, and we bring it to the cross, we bring it to Jesus, we surrender it to him, and we exchange it. We exchange our, bo our bondage for his freedom. We exchange our guilt for his forgiveness. We exchange our sins for his holiness. 
2 Corinthians 5, 21 says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So we give him our sin and he gives us his righteousness. And so the cross of Christ, we exchange our sins for the righteousness of God. 1 Peter 1, 13 through 16. So prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. So you must live as obedient children. Do not slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your desires. You, you hear of people who are backslidden? That, that's where that, it comes from this verse. You didn't know any better then, but now you must be holy in everything you do. Just as God who chose you is holy, for the scriptures say you must be holy because I am holy. Number one, come to Jesus. Put your faith in him. Surrender your life to him. Exchange your sin and your guilt and your shame and receive his grace and his love and his forgiveness. If you've fallen away, if you've backslidden, if you slip back into your old life, his grace is sufficient for you. If you've wandered from home and you're a prodigal son or you're a prodigal daughter, then come home. His grace is sufficient for you. If you're off the narrow path, get back on the narrow path. Come to Jesus. Put your faith in him. Confess your sins. Claim his forgiveness. 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just. will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Do you believe the word of God to be true? Do you believe that, that, that God is true to his promises? Yes. He says if we ask for forgiveness, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. He will wash us as white as snow. Psalm 51 says, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Come to Jesus. Put your faith in him. Surrender your life to him. If you've gotten off the path, get back on the path. <laughs> his grace is sufficient for you. He will wash you as white as snow. We're not perfect, but we strive for perfection. That's right. Verse 15 and 16. But now you must be holy in everything you do. Just as God who chose you is holy, for the scriptures say you must be holy because I am holy. So I want everybody to hear me on this. Come as you are, but don't stay as you are. Come as you are, but don't stay where you are. We're to strive, we're to, to pursue we're, we're to strive for perfection. We're to strive for holiness. We're to strive to live godly lives. 2 Timothy 2.22 says, flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness. We're to run from sin and to run to God, to strive for perfection. Jesus said in his famous Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, be perfect therefore as your heavenly father is perfect. So we're not perfect, but we're striving to be perfect perfect. We are to be holy because God is holy. See, Jesus is our standard. He's our model. He's our example. We're trying to live our lives like him. Now, we have a long way to go. It's easy to compare ourselves to the people around us. Like, well, <laughs> I'm pretty good compared to that dude, right? But when we compare ourselves to Jesus, who lived a perfect, sinless life, we're to strive for that perfection, He's our model. He's our example. We're to be like Christ. 1 Peter 2.21 says, To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. Like if you're a follower of Jesus, 1 John 2.6 says, Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. We should walk in Jesus' steps. We should live our lives as Jesus did. We should leave that life of sin. 1 John 3, 6 says, anyone who continues to live in sin, anyone who continues to live in him will not sin. But anyone who keeps on sinning does not know him or understand who he is. Like if you're a true follower of Jesus Christ, you will leave your life 
of sin. You will leave your sin and walk with him. Come as you are, but don't stay as you are. In Christ, your life will change. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone has trusted in Jesus, if anyone has become a follower of Christ, he or she is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. The old life of sin is gone, and we're now living a new life in Christ. Baptism is a beautiful picture of this change. Like we have some special people getting baptized today. It's a beautiful picture of the changed life. When, when someone is baptized, when, when they're put under the water, they're buried with him in baptism. The old life is put to death. The old life is gone. The water is symbolic of the, the cleansing of Jesus' forgiveness. And when they come up out of the water, they're beginning a new life in Christ. The old is gone and the new has come. Raised to walk in the newness of Christ. We're on this journey to heaven. Amen. And it begins at the cross. It makes its way through the waters of baptism. And our home is in heaven. And as the, scriptures, as the scripture we're looking at today, we're temporary residents. We are just passing through. That's right. I think about Jody Whitaker, one of our members who suddenly passed away two weeks ago, 40 years old with two small kids. It's a reminder to us that life is short. We're not on this earth a long time. We are just passing through. We're temporary residents. Our home is in heaven. And we're striving and pursuing that. Listen to what the Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 3. Not that I've already obtained all this or have already been made perfect. This is the Apostle Paul. He's saying, I'm not perfect. I haven't, I haven't arrived. I haven't obtained it yet. But I press on to take hold of that for which Christ took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Amen. The Apostle Paul saying, I'm not perfect. I, I, I haven't arrived. I haven't obtained all of this. He said, but I press on to the upward call of Christ. Like heaven is the finish line and Jesus is the prize. We forget what lies behind and we're pressing on toward what is ahead. And so the application today is we're not perfect, but we're in a process. A process of becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. And God promises he's gonna finish the work that he began in us. Philippians 1.6 says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. None of us have arrived. None of us is perfect. But we're striving for perfection. We're striving to be like Christ. And hopefully each day we're taking a step closer to the finished work that he has for us. Amen. And when Jesus comes back or when we go to heaven, we, we, he will... He will complete the work that he began in us. So where are you on your journey? We're, we're all, on, all on a spiritual journey. And I, I see so many people who get stuck on the journey. They, they get stuck at a certain level spiritually. Or, the, or they fall back. We looked at the verse earlier about, about backsliders. Where are you on the journey? Are you stuck on your journey? And if you're stuck, you might need to mix it up a little bit. You might need to change it up. Get out of your normal routines. Do something radical. Like shock your faith a little bit. Uh, I go to the weight room once a week. I don't know if you guys can recognize that or not. Um, but I go to the gym, right? Lift, lift some weights. And I was in there, I was in there a couple weeks ago and uh, Matt Lump comes in and Matt's, Matt's a pretty big dude. And I was just finishing up my workout and uh, he and I were talking and he was sharing with me about his, his dad had recently passed away. And, and so we had, you know, kind of a 
pastoral moment there. And, uh, and so I put, I put my beats back on and, and he went to work out. I was, I was just kind of finishing up, you know, so I, I was, had already done the, the larger muscles and I was working down to the smaller muscles. And so I was over in the mirror and I was doing the uh, curls. I'm a little, my little 22, 22 and a half dumbbell curls, you know, I do, do uh, three sets of 30. And I look over and he's on, he's on the incline and he's doing like 40s on the incline. And I was thinking to myself, <laughs> I, I could do that much. Well, he, he's a lot bigger than me, but yeah, psh. So then I go over and I'm doing, I'm doing the, the uh, tricep push down dillies. And then I go back and pick my 22s back up and I look at, look at him again. Now he's got the 85s. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, that's, uh, I think I'm going to leave the gym right now. <laughs> but then I thought to myself, I do the same workout every week, once a week. I need to mix it up. I need to shock my muscles. I need to, I need to get the 85 dumbbells, right? I ought to go more than once a week. Maybe, maybe I'll go three times a week. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll go four times a week. Shock the system a little bit. Shock the muscles a little bit. We need to shock our faith. Maybe you're in the same routine. Come to church every week, do the same thing every week. I want to encourage you, do something radical. Maybe, maybe you read a verse a day. You do the U version, you do, do like a verse a day. Why don't you just read, read the whole gospel of John tomorrow? I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to shock my faith. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to read the whole book of Revelation tomorrow. Maybe God's not answering your prayers. Maybe, maybe I'm going to fast. I'm not going to eat anything for 24 hours. And every time I have hunger pains, I'm, I'm going to pray. Or I'm going to fast for 48 hours. Or maybe you listen to the same worship songs every day, right? You've been listening to Brandon Lake and Phil Wickham and Elevation. Mix it up. Get a little Maverick City in your life. Get a little King's Kaleidoscope. Listen to some mosaic. Like mix it up. Maybe you tie that every, every month, you like, I could give 10%. Give 20%. Like shock your faith. Mix it up a little bit. Go ser serve at the co-op. Go down to downtown Athens and, and share your faith. Instead of coming to church once a week, say, I'm gonna come three times a week. I'm going to come Tuesday night to discipleship. I'm going to come serve Wednesday night with the youth. I'm going to come to celebrate recovery. Like, like mix it up. The, the point I'm trying to make is if you're stuck, do something to get unstuck. Mix it up a little bit. Shock your faith. Get out those 85-pound dumbbells. Right? We're on this journey to the upward call of God. The prize is heaven. The prize is Jesus. And let's not stop growing till we get to the finish line. Right. And if you've never put your faith in Jesus, you're not gonna get to heaven through your good works. It's through what Jesus Christ has done on the cross for you. And I'm gonna pray for you right now and give you an opportunity to surrender your life to Christ. Let's pray together. God, I thank you that we don't get to heaven through our good works. It's not based upon how many times we come to church or how much we give to the offering or, or how faithful we are in our prayers, but we get to heaven through putting our faith in Jesus. I thank you that he was the ransom for us, that he paid the price for us, the, the precious blood of Jesus. He died in our place. God, I pray if there's anyone here, anyone at our Monroe campus, anyone at our, our Coney campus, anyone listening online, and if that's you and you've never put your faith in Jesus, I pray today would be the day of your salvation. Just surrender your life. Come to the cross and, and lay it at his feet. All your sin, all your shame, all your guilt, all your baggage. We're not perfect, but Jesus Christ is. And I pray, God, we can come as we are, but we're not gonna stay where we are. We're gonna keep growing, becoming more like Christ. And I pray for everybody here, God, everybody watching. Help us take that next step of faith. Help us take the next step of obedience, God, whatever it is that you're leading us to. And we pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen.
What an awesome word this morning. And let's, let's hammer that down. Like, you know, we're, none of us are perfect. But as long as you keep striving to be as close to God as you can, then we're in good shape. Y'all stand up. Let's worship. Let's sing one more song this morning. verses again. Sing loud.
ahead and have a seat. Y'all can go ahead and have a seat. As we continue to worship this morning, we are celebrating baptisms. This is people publicly confessing that they are given their life to Jesus. And so we have Sarah baptizing Rebecca this morning. And so how incredible it is people investing, giving their lives into other people and growing in their relationship with Jesus. So here's Sarah. So I have Rebecca Barton here and I've been waiting for this for a few weeks now. I'm super excited. Um, it's amazing how God works and how his timing is perfect and where he puts um, people in the right place at the right time. So about three months ago, I was volunteering at the Southeast Gwinnett Co-op, and little did I know that that day I was going to meet Rebecca. And we were talking, and we just like hit it off immediately. It was really weird, but not in a weird but way, but that it just happened so quickly. And so we started talking, and um, that day, Alan Smith from the Monroe campus was also there um, doing hot dogs for lunch. And as we were talking, I told Rebecca that I attend Greystone Church. And she said, well, before COVID, my family attended also. And then COVID happened and they didn't come as we didn't either. And then life just happened and she didn't get back. Well, she noticed Alan there um, doing hot dogs. And so God started speaking to her at that moment. And then as we were talking, he really started speaking to her. And I told her that she should, she should come back, like give it another try now that COVID is over, like come back. And she did. And a few weeks ago, she um, joined my discipleship group on Wednesday nights, which has been an absolute pleasure. But while we were talking that day, she had told me that she was baptized as a little girl but she had no idea what she was doing and what it meant. And she um, wants to make a stand, um, public stand in front of everyone, uh, letting everybody know what God is doing in her life. And I'm super, super excited to be on this journey with her and to see how God uses her as the hands and feet of Jesus. And I'm also super excited um, for the new friendship um, that we've built in our building I'm super happy about that. So with that, Rebecca, I have two questions. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? And the second question is, do you promise to follow him all the rest of your days? And with that, as your friend and your sister in Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is great. That is great. So it's incredible what Rebecca is doing, but it's even more incredible that the example that she's setting for her family. So her, daughter, her, her daughter's coming up to get baptized right now. So yes, that is it. Setting the example for our families. Hey, it's nice and warm. It's nice and warm. So you don't have to worry about it. Yes, it is nice and warm. And so again, so Sarah, again, <laughs> investing into people. Look at the impact, just giving your life away to people. So again, here's Sarah. Okay, so here we have Rebecca's daughter, Maddie. And she has been wanting to get baptized for a long, long time and has kept um, bugging her mom and pushing her about it. And so now that um, Rebecca has taken her stand, Maddie wants to... Um, take the same step and let everyone know that she um, loves Jesus and wants to uh, be bold for him. So Maddie, I have two questions for you. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And the second question, do you promise to follow him all the rest of your days? Then with that, as your sister in Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, it doesn't get any better than that, that seeing 
God work in someone's life, Sarah, to lead a friend to Christ who leads their daughter to Christ. That's just how it works. And we're so grateful. We're so glad that you are here with us at Grace. If you're a first time guest, we especially wanna welcome you. We hope you enjoyed your time with us. And we'd love everyone to look at the communication card that you received um, when you walked in or it's in the back pocket of the chairs. And if you're a first time guest and complete this, we will donate $5 to the Southeast Gwinnett Co-op as a way to say thank you. But there are other things that you can communicate to us on that card. Maybe as Pastor Jonathan was speaking, you realize that you wanna give your life to Christ. You want to rededicate your life to Christ, maybe. If you would indicate that on your card, we will follow up with you. Also, maybe you're ready for baptism or we have our newcomers lunch next week. Anything you wanna communicate or prayer request, that would be wonderful. Um, We're about to take up our offering. There are four ways to give here in the service, online at the kiosk, mailing a check, all those ways. But we wanna take a minute and share with you one of the super cool ways we are using your offering. We get to provide for many ministries in our community and here's just one. Let's take a look. All right, well, we're here with Jeff and Connie at City of Refuge, some people that uh, we love being partners with. We love the, the work that you guys are doing. There's always a need to be met um, and we just appreciate the faithfulness with which you guys do that so just a small thing the church wanted to do this check is for five thousand dollars just to add to help you guys meet the need like i don't have to ask what that is you already have a list of of what that can go to and what that can be a part of so we love you guys this is for you Um, thank you we look forward to everything that's coming down the way well, we, and we love our partnership with Greystone and the way that y'all do things like this, but the way also that uh, y'all care about us, y'all pray for us, and y'all send teams in to help us. And uh, that is so important because it's, uh, you know, we can't do everything by ourselves. As the buckets are being passed, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for continuing to give. Um, City of Refuge, we are able, they support the homeless in Athens. We do coat drives with them, we send teams, and we get to send money. So thank you so much for giving. I want to let you know about a couple things before we dismiss. One is we have our parent-child dedication um, in about three weeks. And so what that is, it's an opportunity for parents to dedicate their children to the Lord. We don't baptize infants. We wait till children receive Christ themselves before they're baptized. But this is just a super neat thing that we get to do. That'll be on November 19th. But if you would like to participate, there will be a class on um, November the 12th. So you can write that on the card. You can email um, our children's pastors or um, you can show up for that class. That will be great. And the very last thing, y'all know I'm super excited about this, but on all of your chairs was a card. And this is promoting our women's conference. This will be our sixth one. We're so excited about it. And it's in January and it's a Friday night, Saturday morning. We have it here. All the campuses come together. It's a huge huge event. We have our special Rhonda Chapman speaking again. We're so grateful for her. We're excited for her to share with us. She brings so much. It's going to be a lot of fun. But the reason the cards are on the seat today is because the special best price with the free t-shirt ends Tuesday. We already have 105 signed up. It's going to be phenomenal. I promise it will sell out, but I want to go ahead and let all of y'all know to sign up. Um, And this card gives you all the information, but if you have more questions, feel free to email me, jennifer at graystonechurch.com. All right. Love y'all. Have a great week and we will see you soon.